Hi, my name is Dr. Ferdinand Mweke, and welcome to Truth in Brief. Um, we are bringing this edition of Truth in Brief from our class at the School of Divine Priorities, and the class is present here. Would you guys want to say welcome to the Truth in Brief audience? Welcome. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much for that. The School of Divine Priorities is our training program that we use to equip leaders to make impact both in the marketplace and in um, pastoral or church ministry. And it's, it's a two-year program made up of six weeks, divided into one one-week uh, contact sessions, uh, three for each year. So, I mean, people in the marketplace or pastors or leaders, uh, people come from different places and they are edified and equipped. Uh, just imagine like one week in March, April, one week in um, July, and then one week in November. And then you repeat that the second year and you are equipped to serve God much more effectively. Now, in this edition of Truth in Brief, there is, there is something I call the cry of a true prophet. You see, in our generation, you have a lot of prophets now. Everybody is a prophet, prophet something, prophet something. And many of these prophets want the people of God to be dependent on them. You know, So they are the prophet, they are the one that have the spirit, they are the one that hear from God. They are the ones that have the anointing. They are the ones that have the answer to your problems. So you depend on them as the prophet. And some of them even quote that scripture. They say, by a prophet, the Lord brought the people out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. As if they were the prophet that did that. Of course not. But here is the cry of a true prophet. And it's coming from the life of Moses, the servant of God, so I'm reading from Numbers chapter 11 and verse 29. Okay, let's read it from verse 27 so that you can get the context. Numbers 11 from 27. And a young man ran and told Moses and said, Eldad and Midad are prophesying in the camp. So Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. Forbid them. How can they be prophesying in the camp? Stop them. Stop them. Then Moses said to Joshua, Are you jealous for my sake? Oh, that all of the Lord's people we are prophets, and that the Lord will put his spirit upon them. You see, what is happening here is that God, Moses complained and said, Lord, this burden is too much for me. So God said to Moses, Raise up other elders, and I will put my spirit on them. Now, these people were appointed, but they didn't come out to the tabernacle. And now, the Spirit even came on them in the camp, and they began to prophesy. And then Joshua says to Moses, My Lord Moses, forbid them. They are prophesying. They are prophesying. Common people are prophesying in the camp. Stop them. <laughs> and Moses says to Joshua, Are you jealous on my behalf? You are zealous on my behalf? How I wish that all of God's people were prophets. And that God will put his spirit on them. Do you know what is going to happen to us if we agree with this large-heartedness of Moses? And as servants of God, we strive and labor so that every one of God's people will be filled with the Holy Spirit just like the big Moses is filled with the Holy Spirit. Every one of God's people will prophesy just like the big Moses can prophesy. We will have a church of warriors not a church of dependent people. And it's not just something that Moses said. Even brother Paul, look at what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. And he was speaking to every believer. He said, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. And then in verse 5 he said, I wish you all spoke with tongues, and even more that all of you prophesied. You see, both Moses and Paul are saying, I wish that all of the people of God would prophesy. I wish that all of the people of God had the fullest measure of the Holy Spirit operating in their life. You see, friends, in the New Testament, the inheritance is available for every child of God. There is no exclusive anointing in the New Testament. The same Holy Spirit that is available for the great man of God is available for the smallest church member. So instead of making the people of God dependent on us, men of God, can we bring them to a place where they themselves can connect with the source? 
we are the same Holy Spirit that is walking in the big man of God. Instead of asking them, come and touch my shoe to tap anointing, or come and bring money to tap anointing, come and hear Moses. How I wish that all of God's people were prophets. My prayer for you is that you will take your place in the purpose of God. Yeah. Nobody will intimidate you with what they call anointing. You know that you have access to the presence of God and you have access to the fullness of the river of the Holy Spirit. Pursue spiritual gifts and don't let anybody stop you from the best and the greatest that God wants to do through your life. God bless you. <laughs>